Tim Sullivan here with Toby Hooper for the commentary track of the Screen Factory's magnificent Blu-ray edition of Life Force. Hello, Toby. Hello, Tim. <laughs> it's Toby here. And uh, this is just magnificent. For those of you, uh, this is the, uh, the British cut, your cut, of Life Force. Yep, yep. And you and we and the movie just starts right off. And I just have to say that for those of you seeing this, even if you saw it before, you're seeing it like you've never seen it before because Toby has gone in and color corrected this film personally with Scream Factory to make it look like the film he always intended it to look like. It has all that uh, the, the 70 millimeter look is back now. And you know, just this movie just starts right off with uh, Henry Mancini's magnificent score and you know, taking us back to 1985. This was uh, three years after the release of Poltergeist and right in the mid 80s, we got all this sort of splatter films coming out and here right in the middle, Toby Hooper, Texas Chainsaw, big budget, 70 millimeter, British, Henry Mancini, John Dykstra, just epic science fiction horror movie. How did you go from Texas Chainsaw and all the way, now you're here to uh, Life Force. Oh, I followed the breadcrumbs. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I followed the pictures and, and then it uh, led me to this. I met, uh, I had a meeting uh, with uh, Menachem Golan and uh, he uh, pushed a book across the table to me that was uh, Colin Wilson's Space Vampire and he said, uh, I want you to make this uh, Film, you know, you make this film. Go to go to Palm Springs this weekend. Go have a, a, lot, a nice, a lot of fun, good time. Read the book, and uh, and let's make it here. And then then he called for uh, Priscilla to, to to do something as assistant. And, right. Uh, and then so uh, I got up. I had the book in my hand. I was leaving, and he said, Toby. And I turned at the door and looked, and he said, I'm, I really mean it. Let's, let's make this picture. I was, oh, he wasn't kidding. I wasn't kidding. So, I mean, uh, so, so you know, so I went to Palm Springs, read read the book, came back. It's kind of an irresistible title, Space Vampires. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds like, so, you know, it's, it, it sounds like something out of Weird Tales. Or... It, yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 um, because, again, a question that a lot of people say about Life Force, would you file it under science fiction or would you file it under horror? And Space Vampires kind of combines both genres. It was a good, uh, it was a good title. So you read the book and what was your impression? I thought this, is, uh, th this thing is great. I mean, this thing is terrific. It's about uh, relationships. It's about... <laughs> You know, it's about how it's about the relationship between men and women, and yes. uh, and and uh, and how that can turn. You, you know, how there can be a a dominance in a relationship that can flip flop back and forth, uh, and um, and it had all of these incredible things that I grew up wa wanting to see. You, you know, uh, and. Uh, uh, so you told, yes, I want to make this movie? Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, the deal was done. By the time I got back into town, uh, the, the agents had been talking. and um, Was there a script yet at this point or just a book? Just a book. So you were came on board and helped develop it. Did you ever consider writing it yourself, Toby? Uh, well, I, 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 I like writing with uh, a partner. And, and I, I'd been working with Dan O'Bannon and thought that Dan would be great for this to bring him into it. Uh, we certainly look, had see. the pedigree, aliens, dead and buried, you know. Yeah. Alien. So did you I help? Got, did you develop? Did you tell tell them what you wanted? How you how you envision this? Y y yes, I yeah I did, and and um, and he would rework a scene and and I you know I would either give it my blessing or say let's go back into it and yeah you know, kind of uh, the. the 
Uh, the, the screenplay was being written also as the film was being shot. So I mean, it wow. never, you know, it, it it was a long shoot and a long. That's it's awesome. like a two year production. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, looking at what's on the screen, it's very interesting yeah. because here we are, you know, 28 years later after this movie, and these effects are holding up. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, Toby, and it, it, I, re, I remember when the movie came out, you had the shadows of, you know, Alien, 2001, Star Trek, the motion picture, um, and yet you managed to depict a spaceship in outer space um, s vision that is really unlike anything we had seen before. There was, were you realizing that you had to create something that was different than what had come before, and, and working on that specifically? It, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. The, the you know, the, the Space Vampires, the novel, uh, um, uh, brought up a, a lot of the images for me. And um, at, le at least the beginning, you know, the genesis of the thought of what all of this should look like. This, by the way, this is uh, st on stage six where uh, at uh, uh, EMI Elstree Studios, uh, uh, where it's called the Star Wars stage. Wow. And uh, Star Wars was... Uh, uh, use the sound stage. In fact, uh, well, I've been told, and I'm sure it's true, that uh, Lucas built the uh, this uh, particular sound stage. This is the first time we're seeing our sort of space bats, which is a, a, a very unique creation, something we haven't really seen before, combining gothic horror imagery of the vampire motif with science fiction aliens, and it, it's it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, man. <laughs> it, uh, this, uh, I'm, I'm kind of drifting a little bit watching the movie, actually. So. Well, it is engaging. Now, what was it always? Did the film always take place in England? Was this, you know, what was, you know, uh, uh, where was the decision made to have the characters British and make this film in England? It, 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 it was always. Uh, it always took place in England, and uh, and at that time. Uh, uh, there was a space a space agency um, in the UK, and I'm, I've forgotten what letters what what, what it was called. Right. Uh, and they were filming, uh, and also on a on a, a budgetary level, there was a lot of breaks to be had shooting in London at the time, and there were these sound stages that weren't as big as what was available in the U.S. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, at, at this particular time, London. All the stages were booked. It, it was a, uh, uh, Ridley uh, uh, Scott was shooting. Um, um, it's a, uh, this was a Blade Runner. No, no, no. Uh, the, 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 the Legend. Oh yeah, that's right. Legend. At, at eighty-four. Time, uh, we were shooting in eighty-four. Uh, Return to Oz was being shot there. Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, it was that. Uh, that a fire at Pinewood that burned That's down. That's right, the, the legend set. Yeah, the Bond uh, stage. Wow. And, and we're intercutting between like sound, sound stages, like the interior of the space shuttle mm -hmm. was shot on uh, the stage where the Overlook Hotel lobby was built. Really? Yeah, and that's that stage burned uh, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was rebuilt uh, by the time I got around to, to shooting this. A lot of the footage so far, this part of the movie is a lot of the stuff that was not in the American release, right? There, there in the the, um, the trip to the spaceship was shorter in the American release. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, and down in and in, in through the veins into the tube of the 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 inlets and into the, um, the 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 large alien spaceship. Well, uh, it's interesting because, like you were saying, a lot of times they want to cut movies for length, get in, you know, another viewing at the theater, um, and you could see how they would say, let's truncate this and just start in the action. But in many ways, you know, before we get to quote Kansas, uh, I mean Oz, you want to show Kansas, and this is the, this for me is the whole setup of the film. And, 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 and without it, it always felt a little disjointed. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why, you know, some cuts of longer movies, when they cut some of them shorter, uh, the shorter version seems longer 
than the <laughs> long version because you, you because you're not connected. You know, you're just you're counting time. You have no involvement. That's a that's a very interesting case. It is true. I like I you know like uh, some of the longer version, like even the, the Lord of the Rings films, even the longer ones, I I feel go by faster because I am more engaged. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand it more. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if if, you, if you're not connected, if you if you don't have any investment emotionally or any kind of investment, you have no reason to. You're just waiting for the next, uh, uh, you know. The, yeah. So this is interesting because up till now you had done Texas Chainsaw, Eaten Alive, um, Fun House, Salem's Lot. Very contained movies. You're either at, you know, you're in Salem's Lot or you're in the home of the family in Poltergeist or you're just, you know. Here is a film that has such a canvas, such a wide variety of locations. How, how was it for you to suddenly have all this, you know, this canvas to work with and paint upon? Oh, well, it was great. It was, you know, it was absolutely great. It's, it's what I'd always wanted to do, you know, was to have a... Uh, a, f a film of this size and uh, that you know tr truly deserves the widescreen process, especially for Matilda May's breasts. I, I tell you, Matilda May <laughs> is and, and, and totally incredible. Yes, uh, most red-blooded uh, boys who saw this movie in the '80s will never forget it, uh, and in many part due to Matilda May's pretty much naked performance. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how, how, how was that? I mean, you know, working with three characters who pretty much are naked throughout the entire movie. Yeah, it was very, yeah, really, uh, it, with, with Matilda, since, since I worked with her over a hundred days, um, it was like her costume. Right. Yeah, you know, it literally turned in, in, into her. And and for her, too. It must, must have. I mean, it was. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there were all the modesty precautions taken and all of that. And, uh, and now, are these the actors in those cases? Are they uh, mannequins? The, uh, the, 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 the aliens. Yeah, sometimes they are. They, they are in the wide shot. Um, there, there were entire body casts made of uh, the actors, mm -hmm. um, and then there. Uh, that's her. Uh, that's her, and there, there are a couple of close-ups that, that I couldn't get, you know, I couldn't get away with for, for right. a model. Her, her model. I understand the, the, the model was a, uh, a high-ticket collector. Oh, I bet. Um, okay, those, so those are probably models, right? Those are models now. How much of that was actual set, and what part of that was, say, green screen or? or no, no green screen. Really, all. that no. was all of that. What was... you saw was literally what you walked yeah. on. Oh yeah. my God! Yeah. Wow. So, you worked with the amazing John Dykstra on this. Yeah, John's awesome. What? How? Yeah. How much involvement did you have? With like the the shots that ju we just saw, all that stuff. I mean, did you were you there when they were actually filming it? Did you give them storyboard? And, and how how hands on or you know how did that work with you and uh, John? Well, what what we've seen in in the interior of the ship and the uh, uh, the crew members uh, and weightlessness and those EVA suits uh, uh, that was all that was all practical. Um, it, uh, we, we didn't have wire removal then, wow. and, and so uh, so that uh, they were floating. I was using the uh, the uh, Superman flying rig team. That really had done, uh, you know, for uh, Dick Donner, uh, uh, Superman. And um, but 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 you have four of them floating at one time, and if someone moves uh, a, a little bit, they'll start to to pendulum, and then. That will set up something on the wire. The next guy pendulums, and they're swinging. Then, oh my God! And it and it took um, sometimes it took an entire day to get off a, a shot that lasts um, two to three seconds before it could 
to the shop because, because they, they were like 40 feet in the air wow. in some places and they would puke in the suits, you know, I mean, they get uh, air sick, <laughs> they get sick, they'd, pan, they'd freak out and so have to bring them down. So and, you kind of, you had that same problem on the fun house with I, the people up in the, the uh, carousel, yeah, the, the fa- fa- Mary they, they, Yeah, no. You're I mean, always having people puke, puke. from above on, in your films. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is so. Really this good. is all. <laughs> <laughs> all the, the this must have been now, so cool for you to like be on these sets. Yeah, that this scene where they're floating down the, um, you know, floating down this uh, passageway, mm-hmm. uh, was also uh, you saw no wires, you know, but they're floating. And, um, yeah, how did you do that? Was it was well? It... I shot it straight up and down. I mean, you were looking straight up with the camera. And the, the, the wire rig was attached to their backs that went up and was hidden by their bodies. So they're actually, instead of coming toward you, they're coming, they're dropping down onto the camera. Wow. So they, you know, they drift off the walls and... Uh, and it, uh, it's so different now because now... And then you know later on in some of the, uh, the animatronic puppet shots, now you would just have your wires and your crew and bring in the CGI. I mean, there there really is a a craft to doing this stuff back then that I think people don't re- realize or appreciate. Yeah, they, they they were more like magic tricks, really. Yeah, and, and illusions. Yes. And, uh, and I think that you know you get that. I mean, quite frankly, when I watch this. I feel, you know, with all due respect to you know a movie like Prometheus, but I just feel like I'm there here, and I, and you guys were there. Whereas I'm watching a CGI fest, and it just feels like okay, I know that that's just a, pup, a bunch of people in a green screen created in a computer, and it just doesn't have the. All right, that's that's the first big shock. That's uh, very Toby Hooper that moment. The the the. Uh... The, the minutia floating in the air from the fire that yes. is, appears to be weightless as a... Uh, yeah, how did you do that? We, f- we found a... Because um, f- that's, f- that's, not, that's not added no. digitally. That's live? That that's means- live. That's, that's, th- those without, uh, those without uh, oxygen mask on or mask, you know. Yeah. Sh- shouldn't have been in that room. And, oh, boy. Uh, well, I mean, <clears throat> it, it was... Um, uh, so a substance created by a fireworks factory in um, in Germany that you you light them you know, you know like those ah, little, sort little of like snakes. the embers yes yeah, so yeah. little snakes like the but, embers of a fire but very they would clever spew off a st- very this. clever <clears throat> now this is interesting uh, okay so now here we are in London and. This fi- now the film really starts to feel like a Quatermass film, a Hammer Quatermass yeah. film. You know, you expect to see Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing and Edward Woodward. Yes. <laughs> but it's interesting because I believe is this where they start talking about Haley's Comet? I can I believe this this scene that they're discussing that uh, the the creatures are right. are, th- are, th- are now, they saying they're there? But they're not really there. There's, right. There's a line in here. But so this is what an amazing cast. You got Peter Firth from Equus, Frank Finley, who, you know, among many oh. other things, Three Musketeers, and. Uh, Oth- Othello. Othello. I mean, he goes, he's the great, greatest Iago I've ever seen. It's so interesting because, you know, so many filmmakers get pigeonholed, stereotyped, and. You know, if somebody just saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they may not consider Toby Hooper as the director for a film like this, you know, yeah. working with these Shakespearean actors. So, you know, kudos to Cannon and, and Golan Globus. Yeah. What what did they ever say? Like, was it the, the, the big budget look of Poltergeist? What do you think it was? Of all the films to give to Toby Hooper, I mean, I, this would not exactly have been my... I mean, this is something you might have gone to Ridley Scott or Cameron. What what was it that you think Golan Globe said, yeah, Space Vampires, Toby Hooper? I, You know, I, 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 I've I, heard this... Uh, the uh, Something about, about a story that <clears throat> that I've, I have not... <clears throat> I, I, I haven't told anyone. It's just because the subject hasn't come... come ever come up uh, but uh, a friend of mine Boaz Davidson and if this story is correct this is 
kind of cool anyway. Cool. He, um, um, he goes to Monaco and he says, there's this guy that you really have to meet. Mm-hmm. That, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's the kind of uh, crazy that film directors are. <laughs> and he said, uh, and, he, and then his, Menachem said, uh, yeah, I'd have to see him. And then, and then I uh, got the call. Mm-hmm. I heard this story later about okay. the way I got the call. I don't know if it's true or not, but but uh, but if it is true, I mean, I guess that answer is uh, your question. It's uh, someone that uh, all right uh, appreciated me. Now this is a classic scene that you know anyone who saw it back in the days will never forget. Um, this is the first time we see just how lethal this beautiful woman could be. And you were talking earlier, in many ways, this film is a metaphor for, <laughs> you know, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the, interestingly enough, one could view this as a cautionary tale between, you know, the attraction of a man towards a woman, you know, on a sexual level. Yeah. And th- you said that that was definitely not, that is text, that's not subtext, that is something that was very much it, on your mind. Yeah. How, you know, all your films have had that sort of, su- uh, su- you know, other, you know, the, 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 the theme behind the horror. So, was, what, how did you view this? Was this, you know, a succubus tale, an ancient siren tale? I, I, I think an ancient siren tale would, uh, I, I, I think. It works on that level. It, it, it uh, I, I mean, it's there, and I, you know, I mean, I, I totally uh, re- recall always thinking of it uh, as a, a, a metaphor of, of, about relationships. What's interesting is in a lot of these scenes, like for instance this one, you see the security guard with Matilda, and we're watching, but there's always other people watching, very voyeuristic, through a screen, yeah. through a glass, very much like, like a peep show. And it's interesting because they're watching and they're helpless, but they can't look away, very much like the audience watching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've... And now here comes the first amazing, you know, the, 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 the infamous, I think this was the Fangoria cover of the dehydrated guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think he's coming, yeah. Now, this is where we see, really get the title Life Force. What was behind the change from Space Vampires to Life Force? The title. Well, it. The I, I think the film cost so much money. Yeah. And and um, that there was an allergic reaction against something that was considered to, to be a B title. Okay. And um, and I you know I I'm I'm certain that's uh, that's what went on. However, all the way through the film, when I was making the film, the film was called Space Vampires. And so that is a part of the tone of the film. Were you okay with the change to Life Force? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I, I was, and then I, and then I wasn't, and then I was, because, I mean, it, it's, it's, um, it, uh, it is what it's about. I mean, it yeah. is about one of the things it's about, and... Uh, is, is, is about that, you know, the 21 grams, <laughs> you know. Was there ever any issue with, like, when you went into this knowing how, I mean, you could have made the choice to shoot a lot of this where Matilda's nudity is framed out or covered by, discreetly by a shoulder or something. Yeah. Were you concerned with, with the ratings Ish board? Did you shoot alternate television versions? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. And uh, and uh, in fact, um, the um, w- w- when I praise Monaco Manurum mm-hmm. um, and, and say that there was never anything they insisted on. That's great. Uh, they, you jogged my memory. The only thing they insisted on was is that this girl has no clothes on at all, anywhere, th- you know, except in the end of the right. picture. They, they, um, uh, and, and, you know, that was the creative in, 
input that was really, really quite valuable because, you know, where else are you going to see this? You know, you, you, exactly. I, I, you know, I don't think it's... I often forget, like, when they showed this on regular television, that they just blur it out. They, it's it's kind of hard to cut. If you cut her out, there's, there's no, the movie's there's, 10 minutes. There's no movie. No, they do. I, I, I think they do blur it out. I think they blur the nipples out. And yeah. They, and, 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 in fact, one of the um, uh, in early stages of uh, shooting, waxing her completely so she was completely, totally nude, um, and, uh, there, there, there was a way of thinking that that would make her look less nude, but it, it, it didn't. It didn't. So, so she had to you know, grow, grow a little you know, <laughs> bikini thing, but <laughs> but but she, you know, she was, she did have to go to the waxer every day for yeah, uh, just be slick. And, and I'm I'm sure the security guard extras were very, you know. Oh God, what a rough day getting to be a, yeah, be a security yeah. guard on this film. This, I just, this, this guy <laughs> bribing her with the cookie is. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. There's that that underlying sense of that underlying sense of humor that is present throughout the whole film. You know. Yeah. yeah. That that is very British. Yeah, yeah, it is very British. And. You know, what's interesting to me is, you know, you're not British, Dan O'Bannon's not British, but yet the film really has that feel. It, it, this feels like something that had Hammer Studios not fallen, you know, apart in the mid-70s would have made. Yeah, well, it, you know, I was there a long time, and I really got into the... It became like my second home, London, or my first home, and I got, you know, I integrated into... Uh, Everything around. I I, I I love the UK. Yeah. And uh, I, I you know I like it when I when I'm over there. I get I, it's, it's it's like going home. I get a little bit of accent. You know I get really. You, get, you, know, I, you have a British accent. And, uh, well, Hello. when I'm over there, <laughs> when I hear enough of it, I mean I'm certainly say uh, you know. So this is this is this is. You know, we have our first section on the ship. Now it's almost like the the first section on on Earth in London. Um, Tim. Yeah. Uh, now, 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 it's it's several degrees below zero. Oh my God, poor Matilda. And and uh, j just have to say, for Matilda, that that tree, there's someone hiding behind it with a with a, a coat, with a robe, yeah, or a blanket <laughs> or something, because that that was just that that was she, that she, was really cold. She was, you know, she was. A trooper. I mean, she and she has. She she just. It's amazing how she's able to keep sort of a blank stare, but yet at the same time, there's this sort of devilish, evil glint in her eye. Yeah. How, how did you um, pick her? How how uh, was it? Was it? A, I heard Olivia Hussey was one of the people up for that role, or or was that for another role? Um, no, I don't know. I... Did did they was it were you was it difficult to find an actress willing to play that part? Oh, it was uh, totally impossible almost to find a, an actor to play that part, and 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 especially at this particular time in the UK, the uh, um, you, you know the uh, the female actors would not disrobe, um, and and so I had to fly people uh, actors in, you know. From all over Europe, from the states. From, she was French, right? Yeah, she's French. Yeah, and uh, she was uh, a ballerina. Uh, they 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 found her for. She was she was like the fiftieth screen test. Wow. And um, and because it was like, if she doesn't work, nothing is going to work, and she has to be more or less uh, perfect. And, and if you, yeah, without her, there is no life force movie. She's yeah, yeah. she really is the anchor, and uh, she and, has to be somebody that you it's like Helen of Troy you have to believe that you know this woman could just be so attractive and so seductive that you're knowing that you're walking into the arms of death you still walk into the arms of death yeah yeah well and I, I gotta tell you it was just almost impossible to find all of the needs and you know in, in one person well, you, you nailed with, it. and now with, uh, so here, 
again, uh, 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 actors that were mentioned as, as possibilities for this film, uh, John Gilgold, Klaus Kinski, um, wasn't George Papard and Terrence Stamp even up on the, on the wish list at one point? Yeah, uh, Terrence Stamp definitely. I'd met with Terrence, and uh, I don't know about Papard. Uh, uh, could have been, may have been. Uh, uh, Gilgood, yes, was uh, up for... And wasn't Klaus originally uh, Falada, the Frank Fridley role? Uh, uh, may have been. Yeah, that, 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 that rings a bell. What's interesting is, um, and what was always such an amazing part about our, the Hammer films was no matter how ridiculous the situation, British actors just have that ability to make it believable. Yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, it's just such a... Uh, you, you know, I mean, if they're not working in a film, they're, you know, they're uh, on the West End. I mean, exactly. they're, they're always working. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good life for an actor. There. Peter Firth, um, who, you know, he has this way of just, believe, you know, he, he's kind of like our the audience in that he is taking it in and kind of yeah, like yeah. can't believe it's happening but it is happening and we got to we've got to fucking do something about this yeah. um well he's a he's a SAS dude and he's he has to do something about it or uh, die trying well there are, you know i know you've done you use you, re, you rehearse a lot on some of your films how was it with the with the british actors was it different from your working with american actors and uh, or what, did you do a lot of rehearsal no, 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 no. I mean, well, I like a, an American film. I mean, a, a read through, uh, a, a get together, uh, but it was more intimate, I think, because uh, there was a commissary and the, the, there were several movies being made. And oh. so at lunch every day, I mean, it was kind of like a, a you know, a very nice. Uh, uh, party in a, in a way. I mean, nice uh, getting together with all the actors from the other films and uh, and, uh, and and really having a, a long enough lunch to uh, enjoy spending time with the actors talking about what Creating they're Creating a camaraderie. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, each day built on itself and, and shooting totally out of sequence, pr probably shooting something from the end of the film first is, yeah. is the thing I like. And again, your shooting schedule was an unbelievable 120 days. Yeah. Six yeah. months you were on this. Yeah. Um, I, I just can't help but note the difference between this and other films. For starters, most of your films had teenage casts, you know, fun, you know, it's, it's yeah, yeah. teenagers in peril. Um, or if it's adult protagonists, like say you know Salem's Lot, well you still had the teenage sidekick with Lance Curran and Poltergeist. You had the adult, but this is devoid of teenagers, yeah. which, which was very interesting when it came out in the eighty in eighty five with you know the the, the the Nightmare Fives or whatever they were up to at that point in the Fridays, and it was very refreshing as a horror fan to see kind of an adult grown up movie, and. Uh, now, which one of these guys is Mick Jagger's brother? Oh, it's, uh, it's, um... His name was Chris Jagger? Yeah, Chris Jagger. Uh, is that Chris? Th yeah. Th that's him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could see the, the Mick the, Jagger. The, 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 the other guy is the part that I wanted Billy Idol to do, and it, just, it never worked out, so it, uh... That's right, uh... Now, didn't an accident happen here where... Yeah, yeah, that fireball, uh... That w when the room exploded, it was the glass was supposed to craze and then blow out, and um, and it was sugar glass, and so the explosives that blew the glass up turned it into sugar powder, and it exploded. And oh my God! So was it? It, it, it was like looked like it. it like cotton candy, where the sugar started to melt and yeah, so yeah, and no, I just yeah roll rolled up the, uh, the 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 inside the tube. It was almost the set was almost <laughs> built like a chimney, and then there was an electrician up there or something that got covered in like, <laughs> like cotton candy. But he was okay, and, right? Yeah, he was fine. Now, Toby, I just have to note 
for a, a certain member of our audience out members of our audience out there that includes me that this whole movie had there been any gay people in England this movie would be different because when the woman is there the men all grow go to her when the men vampires come they shoot at them but had they been gay it might have been different <laughs> I don't know and I don't know for sure Tim is there I, I, I what makes you think that uh, no I'm just because <laughs> <laughs> I mean I think this uh... because no I'm just kidding because it's like <laughs> yeah. you know the, uh, the, the male vampires don't seem to attract any of the uh, men there. They just seem to shoot at them, whereas oh, Matilda oh. seems to get them to put down their guns and hug them. Oh, oh I see. I so, see what you mean. Well, this guy's not doing bad. That's true. <laughs> now this, again, on the set, animatronics, you got to hide... You, you can't have the rods or the the strings because there's no CGI. So, yeah. so how? Where are the technicians hiding? How is this done? They're on the other side of the set. The the all of the wiring, that uh, you know that that act as muscle, right? Uh, and operating the fingers and all of that and the bladder, go, go through the bottom of him down through the stanchion that holds up that embalming table. Oh wow. And then uh, and, and they're like twenty puppeteers. Oh my god. Pulling the levers like I mean it looks like a Jules Verne thing on the outside. <laughs> I mean the punk. levers and you know, pressing uh billows uh, with their with their feet and uh, this, this is just an incredible sequence. That yeah this sequence took a he hell of a long time just to uh, to shoot, it's it's just you know this truly the, the the never forget the idea of you know the life force going from one to the other the dehydration it, it's 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 something that had never been seen before, it it it's, it and again today they might have done it with computers but I it just would not have the soul. Yeah, it it, it well, but but instead of, see, the, the, there's there's content and it it's uh, uh, you have to embrace like uh, like this guy at first. When he drops the dead body, he's proud of what he's done. Now you know, he's, it's and, like... And now he's scared the shit out of him. Now he knows he's in trouble. Yes. But uh, but I, I think that would be real, right? I mean, I, th I think, you know, you'd... Well, at first... Some of reanimate yourself. You'd win the game, and then you'd be proud. Of course. But also, in the beginning, it's just him and his victim. It's, it, and, and he's unaware. Yeah. And then suddenly he looks up and he realizes he has an audience. But that's... That's that's very true in a lot of the vampire movies. You see the the vampire sucking the blood and into it, and then suddenly they look up and they've been caught. And there's that shame. There's the that sort of that guilt and that fear. And 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 again, this is what I like: the sort of science fiction take on the classic vampire bite in that scene. You know, instead of biting on the neck, it's the life force. It's yeah. very cool. Never seen before. Never really seen since. Yeah. 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 I, I, I've, I've seen, I, I've seen, um, yeah, it's a little, things in little movies, uh, you, you know, or movie, a little uh, of the life force exchange or something like that in a few films, since, but but not, you know, not like not this. on a scale like this, and again, yeah, I could see why this film took 120 days because. You're all over the place. I mean, you're in Hyde Park. You're yeah. in outer space. You're in the the com. You know, this this is a this this truly is an epic film. And for you, it must have been yeah, just so amazing to have a company like Canon behind you with up till then what their highest budgeted film and yeah. just the top craftsmen, the top actors, and just but but rare to see that dedicated to a horror film. That kind of quality, you know, I mean, usually they're like, try, you know, make it for as little as possible. You know. It was intended to be, a, you know, a, an epic. Uh, and by that I mean uh, in scale. Well, it, it, the film achieves it. Uh, and again, for those who may not be familiar with the British, you know, the Quatermass, I mean, uh, you obviously were right. I mean, oh, you grew yeah. up on. You had seen like, five million years to Earth yeah. and all that stuff, and Quatermass in the pit. I loved Quatermass. 
This is, a, this, again, this is another yes. great. Now this, yeah. these scenes here kind of have the Dan O'Bannon Return of the Living Dead flavor, you know, where somebody's turned or changed and there's other people out there watching them and, and you know, and... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, and, was and, taken away there by Aubrey Morris, who yeah. p plays uh, the the uh, uh, member of Parliament. Uh, uh, the guy in the tuxedo. I mean, the, uh, the yeah, yeah. He he was the truant him, him. truant officer in a Clockwork Orange. Oh my God, that's yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, and I just yeah. I get back this stuff work. is just, this here is um, now. So was this were these was that done with like um, air hoses? Yeah, yeah. Was that shot in reverse? Did they blow it up and then you sh did, or did they just suck no, out? No, they 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 sucked it. Um, sucked it. Uh, so basically, what we're bladders. seeing is what you saw on the set. Yeah, <laughs> that's so freaking cool. Yeah. So here we got, you know, all these guys are theater guys. You got the guy from Equus, a guy from Clockwork Art, <laughs> Equus, Iago, and, and, and then this. And, but their belief in what, you know, in a rubber ma mannequin or whatever makes us believe it. Their performances oh, yeah, totally yeah. make us believe what we're seeing. Yeah, well, if, you know, if you're believing them, then you, you have to. If they're believing you, we're believing them. You have to be interacting with them. One thing I want to draw attention to, like that little bit right there, the sound design so brings these effects to life. Yeah. The sound of the rib cage and the, the sort of, you know, the, the, the dust. I mean, were you, were you actively involved with the, with the you know, yeah. the editing process and the sound? Oh, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm always, I mean, I've, I, I, I've lived in London a long time. That's a great effect. That right there. Now, yeah. It's funny yeah. because the film, for the most part, has a very, you know, co stated British proper look. But then you have moments like that that are just ripped right out of EC Comics. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> it's it's uh, how did you, how did you guys and, and come up? Yeah, how did you come upon the look of these? You know. Space vampire victims. These, uh, yeah, the, yeah. What, what, what? Did you have a name for them by any Yeah, answer? yeah. I called them the uh, Walking Shriveled. <laughs> and, the Walking uh, Shriveled. And I mean it. Uh, and um, and uh, this this in particular, I, I, this I, I like them because that rubber thing there does appear to be a, have life in it. Yes. Uh, now and again. Well, you feel for it. you can and, really sense its pain and its 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 fear. Yeah, yeah, and it. Uh, and it's struggle. Yeah. And so again, the puppeteers are underneath the autopsy table with yeah, rods yeah. and pu pumps. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 cables and rods go underneath and out to. Uh, and and they're watching a, a TV monitor because they have um, TV cameras, you know, just outside the frame too, so they can watch. Got you. This is the final, I love this, the final <laughs> cherry on top. Yes. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's How a, many times did you have to do that? I, I think twice. <laughs> I think only twice. Uh, a sequence like that, it, it, it's, it, it feels storyboarded just because it's so perfect. It, it, it just, the, the cuts just seem to be absolutely what the scene dictated. Did you storyboard this film you, you know I I, I, I storyboarded uh, things for Dykstra okay so he could budget them the the film was storyboarded um, however but not until m most of it was to catch up with the with with the film you, you know right, like, right. Like, like like directing a film and you rewrite a sequence or you, you, as a director, rewrites a sequence. Then yeah. the, the writer will go write what you rewrote, and and, and put in his his uh, script um, or her. Or, um, but I had that as a reference, so I, I had a storyboard artist that was uh, storyboarding everything I shot. But I, uh, you know, for the most part. Give, give me the situation, and I'll know where to shoot it from. Yeah. You know, like like, yeah. like the 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 woman on the table, uh, or girl, or whatever. I mean, okay. She's, 
she, she's going to explode and she's going to be on that stationary table and I know I'm going to be inside that, uh, uh, that observation room behind the glass and I know that they're going to see her explode. And so I... What's interesting is, okay, say for instance you're shooting a scene like this, you don't necessarily need to storyboard it. When you get there on the set with the actors, you kind of do a walkthrough. And with with the uh, sequence like we just described, because it involves the pre-fabrication of the, the the dummy and this and that, you, you know, often you know on a low, lower budget film, you may only be able to afford to do one half the mannequin because you can only shoot yeah. from one side. But you had the luxury of of doing you know. Yeah. Doing it all, so when you got on the set, you had the comfort of being able to find it there on the set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an, it was a you know an, a, another actor. That's uh, that's uh, that's that's really wonderful. That you, you know, this must have just I mean, been the like whole thing. A, a kid in a, a kid in a, a, you know in a play set. It it, it 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 was it was it was totally great. I mean, to to be there, it was it was fun. It was... One thing. Um, the scene already went by, and I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, I, uh, an addition that you made to the to the story, which I think is really cool, is the sort of narrative of Haley's comet yeah. being sort of like this. This you said it, the, the 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 disaster. It was a uh, what was it? it Harbinger it, of doom. Yes. Or, uh, and uh, yeah, and it comes around. I think every seventy five years or something like this, and uh, like that. And uh, uh, um, the film was made uh, like two years before the comet was coming, so that by the, the time the film was, uh, it came out, it was like six months away from It's cool the because there coming. is that sort of, you know, mythology that the ha Halley's Comet, you know, that it, 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 even itself, that comet, that it means, Latin, what do they say in the film? It's Latin for disaster or something like that. Yeah. The, no, what disaster is Latin for something? And it, it adds yeah, yeah. an element to it. So now we sort of start the second half of the film where Steve Railsbeck comes in and pretty much Railsbeck pretty much takes over the narrative as the protagonist. Yeah, yeah. How did you cast Steve Railsback? He is he's 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 American. He was our Amer sole American hero in this, yeah, right? Yeah. Had you seen his work before? He... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I knew Steve actually from uh, uh, many years. Uh, not many years, but I mean years. I mean b b before working with him, um, and uh, I particularly liked him in the stuntman. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And he had to, yeah. has this kind of uh, cr crazed energy that is is held in and. Uh, uh, and that that was good subtext. I, I, I mean, a character that has that kind of energy, uh, uh, you know, has something going on inside him that is was good for this part. Well, it's perfect because you know, as we find as the film progresses, he has indeed have something going on inside him. He has, you know, the, the Matilda, you know, the, the, the life force, you know. The, yeah, and what all, you know, happened in time and space and destiny and uh, uh, string theory business and, uh, uh, you know, something that, uh, information that is a ambiguous because we just don't know the answers yet. I mean, there, there is a lot going on. Uh, and again, I like the sort of flashback. Um, now the film, it, the film takes on, so it's, it becomes almost like a mystery. What yeah. exactly happened? Uh, it, 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 it also is interesting in that it has that sort of echo of the thing, where the you know both versions, but particularly in the Carpenter version, where we don't know what exactly the characters don't know what exactly happened. You know, before with the Norwegians, with the thing, yeah. we don't know exactly what happened on the yeah. Churchill with Railsback's character. Right. And we're gonna find out along with the main but, characters, but just when we think we know, you pull a fast one yeah. on us. And, well, we're carrying as audience the same uh, thing that the, the character is carrying, and that is uh, what happened. You know exactly, and. It, 
he kind of knows what's happening. I mean, he's just a, a membrane away from uh, accepting the truth, as he finally does. Right. Um, and because you know, we find out later he was the one that broke all the uh, all of the, the business. Now these, you know, these are just the the walking shrivel. I mean, my God, if you made this today, you could be selling. If they were still, you could probably be selling these on eBay to these, fund your next movie. These walking <laughs> shrivel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was really hard to creating a walking <laughs> shrivel. I'm sorry, man. I know, I bet. But, uh, but what I mean is, if you if you cast a hundred skinny guys. And gals, uh, on film that still isn't enough to sell shriveled. Right. And and so what, what you have to do is overdress them, put them in shit that's, <laughs> that's right. way too big for them. And even that is a, a little difficult. To, skinny is hard to sell, uh, you know, unless they're stripped down to the right down to the right. leather, you right. know, like the the, uh, the 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 characters on the. Well, it's interesting. Operating table. What's well, interesting, those those characters, those kind of shriveled ones on the ground, they, they kind of look like Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Especially the hairstyle. You know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no comment. All right. All right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, again, these sets, um, just magnificent. Was I, I, I mean, I know uh, oh, how... Oh, go ahead. No, no. Yeah, it's an Academy Award winning uh, production designer, John Graysmark. And uh, John, John had gone back uh, to uh, working in the art department on uh, 2001, Jeez. and and all the way up to designing uh, Ragtime for oh, Milos Forman, winning the Academy Award for that. He he did uh, the Bounty and and built a built a boat that Sandy took out here oh my god uh, oh yeah that's recently. right the, yeah. the one that they built yeah for the for the Mel Gibson the Mel Gibson the, uh, Anthony Hopkins yeah, version yeah, yeah that and, Hurricane Sandy just took and he you know he's one of the uh, the premier uh, production designers and uh, it's just brilliant and I, I just got to ask you because I know I would but like did, was there ever a day like you know the day's over everybody's kind of gone home and it's just you just like just walk around these sets, and it's like like a kid. It's just like, oh my god, this is my yeah. movie. Yeah, you know, it's like. Yeah, it was a part of the job too, because because things were still being built, like exterior, uh, the streets that uh, that burn later are still under construction. So, the the studio was working like a manufacturing company. To, uh, it uh, they 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 had big shops, yeah, and they would turn things out. A lot of things were things that appear to be made of iron are actually uh, plaster and, and rebar because they they have some of the best plasterers in in, in the world and, and yeah. And, what were those the, the, co the kind of coffins made out of? Because that's supposed to be like organic living material. They can't, you know. Yeah, that, yeah. Those coffins. I, I was it like plexiglass. Or? Yeah, or yeah. It was it was plexiglass with. Uh, and the edges, uh, the edges of it, it seemed to glow. Have a yeah, shine too. Really... That, that was that Scotch light, uh, or, oh, okay. or, or, or you know, FP front surface projection material like uh, uh, Kubrick used in yeah. 2001. Now again, this is very interesting because there's a lot of voyeurism in this film. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of <laughs> people watching and almost, you know, like living vicariously through other characters. I wouldn't say living through them, but experiencing. Taking this trip, yeah. Yeah, t yeah, yeah, taking a trip, exactly. It's like the life force trip. I mean, I could have said journey, but I no you know, trip it, works it, because it, it's very <laughs> trippy. <laughs> yeah, okay. And speaking of trippy, this sequence here, I love because this is where you really combine the science fiction look with the classic gothic look. Like, okay, uh, yeah. here we go. Yeah, it goes way gothic, on. and 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 uh, it's three o'clock in the morning. For some reason, uh, they always come at three. Tim, I gotta tell you, I know all those things. It's three o'clock. Three o'clock, man. This is a scene that really is amazing. To amazingly benefits from your new color correction. This yeah, scene yeah. never looked like this. Yeah, no, no, it didn't. And they, this, 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 this was shot. Uh, the, the, this scene was lit with. Uh, T ten thousand pounds, not oh in weight, God. but ten thousand, you know, pounds sterling, 
of flash bulbs. Oh old my Sylvania. God. You, you know the big ones like for the four by five, the right the nineteen forties press. Yes. And well that I, ought to have warmed Matilda up, I, you oh, know. Oh yeah. I'm, but the, these <laughs> units were all were on the floor, on the ceiling, on the wall, and they were all on the uh, you know on a nail board, so you could so it was random lighting. Well, this looks like it could have been easily out of a Mario Bava film or yeah, an yeah. Italian horror. The, the, yeah. the use of light, color here, yeah, yeah, uh, Barbara Steele, you know, uh, yeah. Again, I love your classic horror references: the hammer feel, the you know, the Mario Bava black. You know, Black Sunday feel, yeah. and, and but, um, and and we aren't aware this is a dream yet. This was kind of a, a you know, ends up being a big sh kind of. Yeah, yeah. I, I never read the book Space Vampires. How similar is it this to the? How closely does it follow? How much does it deviate from the novel Space Vampires? It. Uh, uh... It's 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 more detailed uh, in a, in a scientific way, uh, and I uh, and less emotional. Uh, the book, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I was thinking because the film, some you know. Okay, I worship two thousand one, a space odyssey, but it's a very cold film. You, I, I get into it intellectually, but emotionally, I'm not there. I'm there on this film emotionally. I feel Railsback's torment and pain. You know, uh, the, the, that, that age, I mean, it's that whole thing with the classic vampire. You're caught between attraction and fear. Uh, seduction and, you know, and, and running away. And he, his, his guilt, you, you, you care. Yeah, what he's what he's going through. Yeah, he's 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 really, really in one hell of a mess. This this guy. When, on on one hand, I mean, he is possessed by his own emotional needs. Yes. Well, aren't we all? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I mean, you know, that's what's great about science and, fiction. And and then uh, he he has this conflict of having to um, set that straight somehow and live with uh, uh, consequences that I'm sure he's, at this moment, this character in the film has not even begun to consider. Well, knowing that, you know, he's indirectly, you know, he, he, he's, he, he's indirectly responsible for basically a pending Armageddon, and he's yeah. the only one that can fix it, really. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that he's, you he, have to gather a courage at that point that is often not asked of, asked of somebody. So, I mean, he's, he's even in more than denial about that stuff at this yes. particular point because he's being hypnotized just yes. to get anything. And or, again, this is great. What I love about this film yeah. is it, it takes different turns and detours, almost like, you know, pardon the pun, a fun house in that first we're kind of an outer space adventure then we're on Earth and we're following Matilda, and it's a you know a succubus siren thing. Now suddenly Steve Rails, it's inter, you know the introduction of Steve Rails back and who he is, and now suddenly it becomes, you know, almost like films that were done later, like The Hidden and all this. Where now it's like, well, let's track down and find the, the succubus, the yeah. Matilda. And, and, and visually, here you could be watching far from the matting crowd. I mean, that to me, yeah. It, uh, yeah. The, the, the birds out there, another yeah. happy accident. I had to uh, have some one fire a gun off or something, <laughs> something to get the birds get to the go. birds up into the. Um, uh, oh God, that was cold there. I mean, that's that's the proper moor, and it was uh, and th this almost lost in an ear. Oh really. <laughs> <laughs> I say all pathetically. Yeah. Toby Van Gogh. Uh, almost, uh, <laughs> an ear almost broke off. I mean. Again, <laughs> here we are. It, you know the trip now. Steve, he's experiencing. You know what Matilda's experiencing. It's 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 it's, it's a very intellectual concept. It's very interesting, and you know we're. Again, the 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 the. 
caught between a <laughs> caution and erection, so to speak, to this guy <laughs> yeah. here. You know this is bad for you. You know you shouldn't go in the car with a strange woman. And you think it's just maybe, yeah, yeah. you know, he's married and he's cheating or this is bad, but, you know, yeah, yeah. the consequences are beyond what he could ever have anticipated. He should have just uh, gone gone down the road to the pub, really, yeah, this guy. Exactly. He does get a, he's, he, as Aubrey Morris's character, uh, Dr., uh, I mean, uh, Sir, Sir Percy, Sir Percy uh, you know, says he's... Um, Thoroughly exhausted. The <laughs> yes. man's thoroughly exhausted. <laughs> Interesting. We were saying, you know, I was saying how there's like no teenagers in this movie, but really, other than Matilda and her sort of doppelganger, who, what's what, you know, who? Well, 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 yeah, well, Matilda jumps, and her body yes. is uh, is is it's, hidden and stays. That's the only females in this whole movie. The only and, real actresses. You know, there's yeah. a couple of them running around at the end, but it's 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 really men dealing with the feminine mystique or the feminine yeah. terror, as a you know. The yeah, and the feminine terror. Yeah, and the f the, f the the feminine inside themselves. Yeah, which we will see later in that brilliant sequence with Patrick Stewart, but more. On yeah, that and I later. think you know, we get to see the whole thing. And, and yes. This, 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 uh, um. That, 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 that was I guess this part of the film I love because it kind of becomes what they call a, a, a procedural as the lawmen are very meticulously tracking down the killer. Yeah, that's jumping from... Jumping. From, from body to body. And, or uh, yeah. mind to mind. That woman, the actress who played... Uh, the, the, the red-haired, uh, what, what is her name? Na Nancy. Oh, Nancy Paul, right? Nancy Paul. Yeah, she definitely has that that very Irish-British, you know, seductress look. Um, again, in casting, trying to find these women who just are so beautiful you can't say no, was it difficult? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Matilda was almost impossible. Right. And then, uh, n Nancy... Uh, May have been an, um, no, she isn't an American uh, actor. Uh, uh, but 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 they were all hard to find. Okay, now we're really getting into Hammer territory. I mean, uh, that's you know here we are. You know it, it, what I love is you got all this this these technology you know space monsters and space vampires and you know spaceships, but it's it's an old fashioned sword. Yeah. Well. Well. It. It's a but but you know there's a bit of alchemy involved yeah. here. As, as he's going to find out for himself, he's going to get into it through science because he's had this old lance brought up that's leaded iron. I, uh -huh. I, I think it is, and now he's uh, uh, experimenting with the effects of leaded iron on um, this uh, 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 material that. Uh, that came from right one of the blown up vampires who didn't get all that blown up that's right yeah and again what i love is the sort of uh you know you're a little bit of that invasion of the body snatchers you know you're not quite sure who's real who's not it it, yeah. it, it, it just works so well um we just a little bit ago there was the shot of the spaceship the, the the alien ship. I had heard that John Dykstra actually modeled after <laughs> an artichoke. Is that is that true? I had read an interview with him where he said he, he actually saw an artichoke and thought with a tentacle on it that that kind of could be the the idea for the ship. Well, I don't know. John said that it, that that I, I've known him always to be an honest, <laughs> truthful <laughs> man. I, I, so maybe it was. So um, yeah, maybe it could be. <laughs> it was um how uh okay so here we go picard professor x oh oh, oh yeah with yeah, hair yeah. patrick uh, stewart pat patrick stewart is just great well patrick stewart thinks you're great because patrick stewart has said in countless interviews that toby hooper is his favorite director to work with well i i that that really makes me proud uh, because Patrick 
is uh, one of the coolest actors, uh, one, of, one of the most giving actors, really, uh, that I've worked with. And, and, and by that, I mean, uh, uh, he's, he's giving something more than just to make himself look good. There is a, at the end of the sequence, there's a, uh, I'll have an illustration of okay. uh, of that because of contributions that uh, that he would make that well this would whole elevate and make the uh, everything better. This whole you know one, you know this this now takes this is this is another great scene. Um, the, yeah. the, the film just really, I have to say, now that I've seen it again and seen it so beautiful and it's yeah it's it's really. An o an underlooked uh, an underexposed, overlooked classic of the genre, but also of yours. And I think it's I'm so happy that people are going to be seeing this again and discovering it again. Um, well, thank you, and and I I am as well. This this scene is okay. So <laughs> this scene's nuts. <laughs> and what's interesting is at first you're not really sure. sure like is he crazy? Is he is he you know. Is he brutalizing her? But you yeah. know, he he knows That's she it. is the de the space vampire. Yeah. yeah. How do you know that? See it. This kind of reminds me in the scene, like in Horror of Dracula, when they they, 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 they see the woman who's become a vampire and she's feigning innocence. She isn't the vampire, but we know she's a vampire. Yeah. She wants me to force the name out of her. She wants me to hurt her. Yeah. How, did you, hey. when you were shooting the, the just on a production schedule, did you do all the sort of spaceship stuff first? And like, how did you sequentially? Did you shoot all the stage stuff, then the location stuff? Did you go back and forth? Back and forth. Okay. Yeah, back and forth, and uh, uh, not always in with with some logic in mind. I mean, I mean, it was, you know. It, like go, going to this particular location, I don't know if this took one or two nights okay. to to shoot, but but of course you know do, blocking that out and going there until you're finished with that location because the, the, this is not a set; it's a it's, it's a, a location. It's a it's a it's a practical. It's a practical okay. location. And, oh, and I, I, one of the things I want to really take note, especially the the, the contribution of the cinematographer. Just like there's so much great shadows, you know that yeah. the, the, like the ref, the shadows of their character. Uh, let's really right. uh, give a little prop to the, Alan Hume. Man. Yeah, he was great. Alan, it, it, really interesting working uh, in in the UK and uh, the fashion and in, in which you work with your uh, your your DP, uh, and because the DP calls himself a lighting cameraman. Okay. And so he's going to light the thing and um, and you you work with the camera operator as uh, to to how you, to stage the scene out where you want the camera. And uh, and, and, and and so you you have much more direct input as a, a cinematographer. Okay. The the uh, this where is he now? He's in solitary confinement. He's been naughty. He's been now, naughty. Now that line originally was he's been bad. Right. And and and, and I shot it and uh, that way and then Patrick pulled me to the side and whispered into my ear. He said, uh, uh, do you think it maybe it could be better if I instead of saying uh, he's been bad. If if I say he's been naughty, and I said, "Oh my God, please say that." Well, it adds a personality. Please. It adds a personality to Patrick, and um, well, I mean, naughty is much worse. I mean, right, exactly, uh, and also, I mean, Matilda's inside him now, right? Uh, inside, yeah. Actually, all of this is a. Uh, What's happening now, and and Railsback knows this, and he's, right. he's going to take Peter Firth just out there and right. to, to give him the goods. That when he touched him back in the nurses' right. quarters, he felt that Matilda is in uh, Patrick Stewart. Well, what's or, cool is because and, naughty is more something that a woman might say, you know, than he's yeah, been yeah. bad, so it works. Um, 
This well, is you, that. This whole scene's a bit of misdirection, you know, not letting the audience in on what everyone else, you know, that that Patrick is, you know, been jumped. He has been jumped, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, yeah, Patrick really goes through some. Well, this is just a this is just a classic scene, and. Uh, I love what I, uh, uh, Patrick, uh, you know, it's so funny because a lot of my, you know, myself included hadn't really heard of him until Star Trek, but now you go back, he was in Excalibur, and, 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 yeah. and, you know, he's in this, and, you know, people rediscover this film who are Trekkies and, you know, X-Men fans because they want to go and see Patrick. Um, did you have any inkling that he would become, <laughs> you know, yeah, the I, icon that he became? Well, and, I, I knew Patrick was going to be big in film. You know, and then, uh, uh, you, you, you know, you can tell. I mean, yeah. You, you, you can. I hear now, now the whole, the, 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 it all turns. And uh, here, here's some real, I mean, this is, uh, this fight Patrick puts up almost, yes. almost strains Steve's milk. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I mean, I mean. You know, I, I mean, I recall is that you know, to just uh, it's it's Patrick, give it's not him a, a stunt double, and I mean, no, I mean and it, it's a very like you said, he's just going for it. He is going for this performance. Yeah, yeah. there's no um, holding back. Uh, was this a set or was this an actual sanitarium? No, the, 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 all of these are sets. Okay. One question before it wears off: Where can we take him? Yeah. Yeah, this is all. There he is. Made, you know, looks like practicals. So. He's uh, auditioning for Professor X in his wheelchair. There, you know, <laughs> yeah, even... <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, a real a, such a pro. Another Shakespearean actor. Yeah. yeah. What I love yeah. about, um, you know, Aubrey uh, Purse or Percy is he sort of has that pers like no matter what's going on, he's got that British. Okay, let's have some tea. Everything's fine. A cup yeah, of tea, yeah. maybe. You know, and all this. Um, <laughs> They're almost <laughs> almost the comic relief, in a way. But yeah, bringing, no, right, yeah. Well, the, the, I mean, not too far, but yeah. that little levity that you know. He, I, I can tell you, Arbery's already getting uptight because he knows what's coming. Yes. So as soon as a as a hundred pound ball of air. Yeah. That's going. Oh. <laughs> that's going. <laughs> He, he he didn't like those air martyrs. Oh, okay, yeah. Because how I mean, a lot of this was for a lot of these act, most of these actors. This was their first kind of genre horror film where you had all kinds of you know. Yeah, I guess so. With big special effects, blow, and blow, you know, exploding bodies and all kinds of you know stuff. I yeah, mean, yeah. The, but they obviously were game for it. They didn't look. A lot of people at this time, British you know actors of this caliber would have looked down on the material. As being B material and subpar. Yeah, it was uh, they, but none of them did. You know, it just, especially considering it was called Space Vampires while you're filming it. Right. What do you What do you think it was that you you know you, you were able? I mean, it, to get such high caliber actors to play. I, well, I, I I think because at this particular period in um, in London. Right. There were all these films being made, like, uh, like yeah, yeah, Legend, Legend. Uh, and 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 uh, and Star and Wars, and, and, which and, again kind of makes the case that this film was viewed more as a science fiction drama than a horror film. Yeah, and and and, and too, you, you know, also Indiana Jones. It, yes, you know, had been shot on the same That's sound true. stages, and, and in fact, this. This stage, I think, is the stage the big ball uh, oh, is wow. chasing Harrison. That's right. That's oh my god. Uh, now this, I always wanted to ask you. I love how suddenly the world goes askew. Yeah. What was the ch what what? Where did you come up with the thought for this scene in particular? Let's cant it. Let's. Yeah. Is it? Uh, uh, I. I, I, I I thought it would look good. It does. <laughs> you know, well, it, it just, it's, you know, it's I thought the, it would, the world turned upside down. You, you, you know, and, 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 and the, the language of cinema from, you know, from the 
from Nick Ray, uh, uh, you know, outside Griffith Observatory. When, yeah. When, when, uh, when, oh, God, Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah, and the camera, you know, goes askew me from the third man. Uh, I mean, right. it's, 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 you know, it's a part of the uh, language of cinema to, to, to do that, uh, that Dutch angle. Uh, uh, it just, just kind of indicates that things are not what they just were. Things yeah, are changing. And, the world is upside down. And, but it, 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 you know, it, it says it's and it says it in film grammar. But it's 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 it, it it does other things too. But what I like about it is it could be overused. But you waited till this moment because I think of all the encounters with the jumpers, this is the most bizarre and daring. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah. And what I love is this scene here, if not handled correctly, could provoke unintentional laughter from an audience. Yeah. However, having seen this film with several audiences, it is an actual, a real creep out. Yeah. Um, and I love the new mix that was done for this, where you can hear Patrick's voice coming from the front and Matilda's coming from the back. And oh. it's, it's very chilly. Yeah, yeah. But... So when you were filming this, was Patrick speaking or was he speak lip syncing to her voice? No, no. Actually, it was the other way around. I worked with both of them uh, to get to discover how we were going to do right. the, the scene, and and um, and and Patrick had an idea to speak in this uh, this cadence. That, that he's speaking in, and he and he and he listened to Matilda a lot. He was listening to her and listening to her, and then, actually, Patrick, in my memory, mm -hmm. developed the timing, the pacing, um, to the scene, and then I, 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 Patrick and Matilda sent him off, to just do it together. Like like a song, uh, yeah. So it, that it, I could it, yeah. you know bring bring them back and it has so they'd be doing the same thing. Uh, you, you, you. It's cool because it does have that very almost the, the very hypnotic, mesmerized sort of sing songy feel. Yeah, yeah. But but it's the same song. They're yes, singing. exactly. And he definitely <laughs> looks like he's possessed by something there. Oh uh, yeah. It's yeah. amazing how he has he's indicating. Her essence. Yeah. It's. Oh yeah, yeah. The film definitely has, you know, a high level of eroticism about it. You know, that's the yeah. whole theme. But it's 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 very unique. And now, okay, so yeah. this is what happens when you screw around with uh, the, the feminine mystique. There you go. Um, but this stuff is all this 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 stuff is very poltergeisty. Yeah, the, this this set yeah is whirling around. Uh, is is built on a carousel, and is spinning about uh, eighteen uh, ten times a second. So and, and the camera's on the set, so we yeah. So I'm throwing shit up in the air, and it's spinning. Oh my God! Uh, really? Uh, yeah. And, and, and it, how and the and how are the actors not falling down there? They're 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 having they're problems standing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what would happen, you know, but uh, they, it works. They, so but, the but cameras on the set, so it, the cameras moving with them, so it, that we so yeah that's, yeah that's brilliant. And we're spinning around like we're like uh, wow. See, that's what I love. Like you said, it's illusion. It's magic tricks. You have to figure this stuff out. Yeah, I like, yeah. I, I, I wanted to be a magician when I was really? eight, eight, eight or nine years old. Yeah, it's the first thing. I either wanted to be a magician or be a mad scientist like Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you became both. And, well, yeah, yeah, In that's many what ways. I, that's what I kind you're, of figured out. You you're, know, the, you're a... You're a, you're a a, a, a cinema a celluloid illusionist. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, this is magic. It's sleight of hand. It's it's it, it is. It's misdirection. It's sleight of hand. Um, you know. So now again, I, I love how this, this the script is really well done. It's just the stakes keep getting higher. Yeah. 
the the okay. level, in it, it's like okay now, the danger is even higher. And uh, and the more that we realize what's at stake, the more guilt Railsback's character feels yeah. because he he's like ah oh, shit. Yeah, and the closer he's getting to um, to <clears throat> you know coming out of that. Uh, 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 kind of amnesia. Yes. Kind of uh, the sort of the sort of but, somnambulant state. Yeah, but those were really big helicopters. Uh, I bet. I, I mean, they, they were Air Force. Uh, okay, now this is my favorite scene. <laughs> my favorite yeah, effect yeah. sequence. This, this, I, I described this scene to to Patrick. Uh, and I, I heard him. I heard him on on a TV show talking about my telling him uh, what I wanted from this scene. Uh, well, tell us, uh, tell us what you told him. Uh, well, he did such a much better job of it uh, than I ever can recall. But it, but it was that you know that that I wanted him to um, and uh, Sir Percy to uh, to. Uh, b blood start flowing out of their eyes, nose, and mouth, and um, and y y and you know, be like anti-gravity right. blood. I mean, have bl and and spew up into this central point where this uh, spinning clot of blood would start forming <laughs> and getting bigger and bigger until it turns into the girl, and then and then it explodes in a ball of blood. <laughs> That, by the way, I, th I think you uh, said it. My, I, I know the way Patrick says that. I, I could just imagine him saying it. Yeah, yeah, I know he. You know the way I, he says it. The way is the way I really did it. I yeah. love that reveal. It's almost you almost can't help but smile a little bit uh, where uh, you pull back to reveal it's like the yeah, guy that to the sword. I love the fact that you don't show him doing that. Yeah. You reveal the aftermath. It it a dolly track back. Yeah. It, 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 it's it, it is almost a little sardonic, <laughs> and, you know, dark humor, you know. Oh, oh that's it's uh, it, there. There is a certainly an element of. Now this yeah. again, for me, this scene is up there with a the scene in you know it, it, the chest burster in Alien, the the scene in the thing where the guy's hands go into the guy's cavity and get cut off. You don't see yeah. this coming, and again, it's not something you had ever seen before. Um, yeah, that was it. Was it? Okay, so, so, so <laughs> this is obviously a set. This whole helicopter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, okay, it's, so these now now we have very realistic dummies of Patrick Stewart yeah. and, and and Aubrey. And what the, uh, is they upside down yeah, and it's pouring yeah. out and you're filming the, in the, reverse? Yeah, or? they're upside down, shooting them at I don't know, uh, 100 frames, 120 something frames. So these blood glo globules will... Right. Okay, now this was shot upside down, but in reverse, because that material was melting. There was ah, acid being injected okay, into okay, okay. kind of styrofoam, and, it, and the blood then started coming out of it, so is, is that, I reverse is printed. That, is that a dummy? What, is that an is that Matilda? No, 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 that's really Matilda. The, the, wow. The, the, the thing that fell out of the shot... Uh, may have been a, uh, a, uh, a prosthetic of her, I'm not sure. I remember seeing uh, that. She, she had a hell of a, long, hell of a problem um, in here because she had been going through being waxed now. Oh, God, 90 right. 90 days, and that blood would run inside her. Uh, uh, she, she, she had a kind of plastic uh, rubber suit on that was you know like blood scab like right and, right and and so the blood would run down you know and get you know down down to, to where the waxing had been going on and she was going through this absolute hell uh, but and pain in this and so i tr tried to get her out of it as soon as possible this is interesting you know love in love on a level you've never known again what I love about science fiction, Rod Serling just epitomized this, is using science fiction plot lines to be, metaphor, to, to be metaphors for you know, 
real issues. That's what I love. And again, on you know, this whole film can just literally be a metaphor for the consequences of obsessive, seductive love. Yeah. Because he's, it's interesting because they're using the word love, but it's purely lust, not love. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, I, unless it is, well, maybe, yeah. Unless, unless, is that or is that love? I, I, I mean, I mean, I, exactly. I, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I mean, is that? Uh, I don't know. Is it? I mean, Citizen Kane. What's that? That, that song. There's. Oh gosh. It, it can't what? be love. Yes. Yes. But that's what they, they, she's she's you know she's making him think that he loves her. It's a mind trick. Um, it's used in Hollywood quite a lot to get parts in movies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, she gave me some of her energy. The idea too, of love or lust, being a palpable energy. That can be transferred, you know. Um, and here, this is a great sequence. The lighting here is just, you know, again, the way it should always look. You know, the blues here, but. Yeah. yeah. I guess it comes down to, you know, this kind of love between human beings. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's love. That's you know that's a at least the power seems to you know to fall into the, uh, the realm of good <clears throat> and and I and I think does but you know what 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 you know what is that what is what is love in between two people <clears throat> like this or, you know well, that's what I mean not like this but I mean <clears throat> well know, love period. is such a powerful force it could be used for good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we enter the final <laughs> stage of this film where it just goes apeshit crazy. Yeah. And I got to say, yeah, it does it. you know, you brought up Billy Idol before as, as eventually, uh, initially a space vampire, but this, a lot of people forget in your, you know, au revoir, the, the Billy Idol video, Dancing With Myself. Which has very, this has very much a feel of, you know? Yeah. It, it's the, the and <clears throat> was this shot on the streets of London? Was this shot on a set? No, no, those were all sets. Jesus. This yeah, is yeah. like, oh, you oh, are, you got, all sets. Um, perhaps up to this point, the, the, the biggest scene you ever shot in terms of extras and scope. Yeah. This scene right here. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. How, uh, what was there anything you did differently to prepare for this a film like this than you would have said for a more smaller film like Texas Chainsaw? Oh yeah, a, a, a long, <clears throat> much longer prep time. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, much longer uh, preparation time because of just so much detail, so many. Were you ever to daunted go. by the task or? No, I just I, it was just so. Uh, in, involved with it, uh, so, and so nothing, really so, having a great time. And, and right from the beginning, when when you know he said, "I mean it," I would, you know, I want to do this. There was never a doubt in your mind that you could do this. Oh no, no, no! That's no. fantastic. See, that's great because All some right. people, you know, I'm telling you, you know, that they, they 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 look at the at their stand. This is like a giant mountain when he first offered it to you, and you're at the bottom, and you know you got to get to the top, you know. Yeah. But you just do it a step at a time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just you just do it. That's all, Tim. You just do it. This is probably the funniest scene yeah, in the movie. I always, I always like this. I mean, he's, <clears throat> it's it's feeding time again. Lunch it, time. Right. And here is where that whole metaphor of, you know, how, um, you know, being sex starved or hungry for sex, you know, the me whatever you want to say, uh, sounds like some heavy, heavy metal 80s song, but. Prime Minister, he's yes. too, too busy to talk to the guys. Exactly. He's, uh... Because, you know, it, it, it's like, unlike, you know, they're not all trying to eat people like zombies it's like they're sex zombies in a way there's there's they're, yeah. they're sex vampire zombies and uh yeah they are they're, they're, they're... 
<laughs> and horny as hell, too. Horny as hell, <clears throat> you know. Um, okay, good good time to bring this up. Listen to this score. This is not a horror film score, really. Uh, I love it. Oh, okay. We'll get back to Henry Mancini's score. One of the nastiest little oh. details here. Yeah. Was this planned? Was this an accident? No. Of the uh, hand grabbing and then... No, 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 no. There's nothing worse than... Peeling the right back there. Of my hand okay, up. come at this is yeah. so nasty. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, yeah, that's a, who came up uh, with that? that oh, oh, I came up with oh, that. Oh, that is I mean, that I mean, is well, great. I, mean, I would have had to come up with that. I, that that's <laughs> very easy. I'd always comics. scared the hell out of me. The back of my hand. <clears throat> I got it hung between a. <clears throat> it was on something like a. <clears throat> uh, uh, all-terrain vehicle. Oh my God! And got my hand caught between uh, the, the 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 handlebars and and a, and a cinder block wall. Oh! And it still have scars. You know, it just oh, ate. that's nasty. And uh, oh, back of the hands, a oochy place to oh. get to get scooched. Okay, so this score more in line with a score for say Star Trek, Star Wars, Indiana it, Jones. Then yeah. you know, fun horror. Yeah, and, and got I mean, you know, talk about you're working with Shakespearean actors. Well, you got a composer here who is you know on a level of Shakespeare. Henry Mancini, you know, Moon River, Pink Panther, Andy Williams, you know, and on and on. I I he must have done a hundred movies. And, Charade, yeah. you know, so many favorite scores. How did Toby Hooper and Henry Mancini hook up and collaborate? On a movie called Space Vampires. Oh uh, well, well, we 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 met uh, at um, at uh, the Polo Lounge, and uh, and you know, he, and I and I looked like a bum, and, and, and I was sitting out waiting for him, and uh, and he came, uh, you know, he came walking over to the table, and he he wasn't exactly all that spiffy dressed himself. I mean, he you know, kind kind of. Well, he's, you know, like a like a bohemian, and well, yeah, he kind of was a beatnik, I, and, um, a beatnik you know, and, yeah. yeah. And I was from the, the you know, the the hippie age, right? And um, and uh, we just uh, we just instantly got on together. I mean, it just uh, now, at this point had it had the same language. Well, where did Henry Mancini? Where did he come up? You know, other than Nightwing, he really hadn't done. You know, he did experiment in terror, yeah. Nightwing, but he wasn't known as a as a genre composer. So, whose idea was it? Was it? It it, it was some. I I heard it's a a, 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 a I, I, Timothy Bottoms was in this film, and it was about whales. Okay. And I I, I, I don't remember the name of it, but but. But the, but 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 it was a, a score that was mostly sounds and sound effects mixed okay. with very atonal. Yeah, and and I, I don't I don't know Tim. It's just something that I thought, uh, you know, this thing I'm doing doing things that no one would do anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know that were uh, not quite the normal thing to do and. Uh, uh, and you know, you know, on in, in film terms of uh, business, I should right, say, business right. models. Uh, so why not? I mean, it's I, you know, I, if you're in a position where you got the backing of a studio, I, well, you know, who wouldn't want to work with Henry Mancini? I, yeah, and and it was just, uh, I don't know, it was meant to be, I guess. I now I I heard you speaking earlier that oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a wire running. I mean, that's a a, a naked 10k. Bulb, really floating down the street towards us, and uh, and you and now going away from us. And Dykstra adds all the ethereal, uh, ectoplasmic. Uh, That's fantastic. And and you know, it, you know, covered the wire. The glare of it covers the wire coming towards us. Okay, so so originally, yeah, and it, it also changes the shadows, the yes. shapes of the shadows. Yeah, here we're getting back to that gothic. I mean, I just love this. this yeah. Is so, okay, real quick, Mancini. Originally, you were working on more of an atonal score. 
I had heard you even talking earlier about taking rubber balls and rubbing them against the uh, piano keys. Yeah, but yeah. How did it go? But it didn't become that. It became this very majestic, it, sweeping score. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, toward the end, Henry or Hank uh, uh, decided uh, to, to, to go a different way. And um, some of the cues were as advertised that, that, that I knew about. Some mm -hmm. of you know, some of the atmosphere, uh, but uh, but this the, the the big stuff came up in the last couple of days of his uh, composing. Interesting. And was was it a surprise when you heard the change in direction? Yeah. Yes, it was, and it was one one, one of those uh, times that uh, you know the surprise was cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yes. Yes. It was, uh, it was well, it works. It's 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 one of the nice surprise. One of the best scores. Um, I, I lo th this I love the, the the logic with this <laughs> this guy saying, "Oh no, don't 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 screw with that." Uh, trying to save the world. We only have an hour and a half. <laughs> I, I mean, it's. I, I, I'm sorry, but that's very British military. Yes, I mean, well, it so, is. It's it's. it's, it's you know, yeah. Yes, um, Peter Firth again, a very good actor, you know, starting off in Equus, you know, as a young man, and then really coming, you know, very authoritative in this role. You really believe him. And at first he's kind of officious, and you're not quite sure if you like him, but by this point, you're, you you know, you like him. Yeah. He, he has some, there's a, there's a little teeny one-liner coming up here where he has a... <laughs> <laughs> very British, very British. I know I do. Um, so, uh, and, and and of course, all of this is a, a build and the right the tower bridge in the background that you just catch a clip. I mean, that last shot was also a a giant. Uh, it's build. interesting. And none of that was like real. Oh, that that's just, oh, I, just yeah, yeah. I just love that, you know, those the, the the walking shrivel. Yeah, yeah. This is these are some very, you know, tricky with all the extras and the say yeah, this, this all, you know, it just kind of reminds me of the all hell breaks loose finale of American Werewolf in Piccadilly Square. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I can I can see what he's You know, it's just that I, fast it's just all you know, all hell breaks loose and there's one of those shrivels, you know, we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. Um Here's one about. Yeah, I love this lady. She just can't seem well, to get up. She's no, trying. No, no. She's almost there. Uh, no, 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 no. She no, can't do it. She just can't quite and, make it happen. Well, again, all those kind of shots, you really are taking advantage of the full composite, the full palette of the the the, 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 the wide screen, the yeah. two eight five. Really, you know. Uh, Again, this is a film that don't even bother watching pan and scan because you're missing. Oh, oh, half the oh yeah. Movie. It's yeah like, don't even. Don't watch. even. Don't see it. Don't see it. Better to not see it. Yeah. Than see it like that. Yeah. This, oh, this is kind of. Yeah. This is, I love. This is great. Yeah. Early ra radio control. Uh, yeah. Really. Electronics. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that, that was. That is the. Uh, yeah. Very like, early. Like this was right at the beginning of that. Uh, th this was. Um, I guess you shot this in 84, and there was very little of that previous to this. Yeah. Um, so this is this is uh, our brand. Yeah, okay, now there. Yeah. I love that. Talk about Nicholas Ray and the uh, planetarium from Riddle yeah. Without a Cause. Yeah. Um, yeah how that's... long did it take to film this whole... Oh, I don't know. I... I... I, a long time. Where in the shooting schedule was this? Because you was this you said you, you know, actually had to shoot this more up front, didn't you? Uh, no, there there were things about it I shot up front. Okay. But it it I can't really be sure. I can, but 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 there's a documentary film about shooting the movie. There is. That yeah, and I and I, I think it's on the special edition here. It's, it's uh, oh, what, it, and. Uh, and if that isn't right, then yeah, okay, I apologize for everybody. Sorry to yeah. tease uh, you folks. But uh, um, but I'm sitting on the steps 
of that cathedral, right. I, I believe. Uh, and I know I, it was toward the end of shooting. So if I was sitting on the cathedral steps, it must mean, it, it indicates that this was shot uh, toward the end of the film. Okay. Uh, or at least the stuff on the right, London right. streets, but right here we're way the hell across London. Yeah, someplace else. So this this now we have our our big Back to the finale. Yeah. Um, London's on fire. London's on fire. You know, it's uh, <laughs> Frank Frank Finley is uh, Frank Finley. Oh, okay, is, uh, yeah. he's on his way. I love again. You have the parallel action. You know, you have him confronting Frank, that villain. So well that. Menace, while you have Railsbeck and Matilda, and fr Frank is in, inviting his own execution. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and in a subtle way, but definite. Which you know is at a point where these characters have sort of used their own will against the will of the the life force, the evil life force. They're you know they're they and. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's, yeah. it's it's interesting because it is again this sequence. This is what Frank Finley. This is very Quatermass. The sort of the sacrifice of yourself. Yeah. For the good of of humanity, as Quatermass, you know, did in in, in in his films. This coming effect is magnificent. It, 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 I I can't to this day. Is it a is it a Frank Finley dummy head or is it Frank Finley with makeup on it? Oh, it, it's it, it's 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 Frank with makeup with bladders and uh, uh, early on in say, the use of bladders. Yeah, yeah, early on in the use of bladders. Uh, this background of mm -hmm. London is one, one of my most favorite backgrounds. Um of uh, London burning and the right. like, and and that was thrown together out of Alan Hume and a box cutter c cutting uh, cardboard boxes. Wow! And spreading boxes out. I mean, th there's no miniatures or nothing. I mean, I mean that that it, that's it's just a cardboard set box with a window with stuff in the distance and lighting. Yeah. 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 Well, so, see again. And smoke. The ingenuity, the hands-on, practical. You know, roll up oh, our yeah. sleeves and get it done. Yeah. It was, it was like let's. We have to make this look good. Let's stop shooting right now and take 30 minutes, and we'll go build London. We'll and it, and it works. It, yeah. And the lighting here, the, the yellows, the color. This is, yeah. uh, he's, yeah. and he's, you know, he's, he's smiling because, well, yeah. Well, he's studying the process. Yes. You, you, you know, I mean, that, that is his, what his life is about, is studying the process of death. Okay, this and, is magnificent. Yeah. That's that. I mean, here it goes. Great, one of the best. Uh, one of the best deaths in a horror film. Just brilliant. But again, you know, we'd only really seen the air bladders in the Howling, American Werewolf. Yeah. It was a very new process, but so perfected there. Yeah. You know, so how how was Frank with the makeup? Was he? Oh, I don't want you know because I've heard oh. stories of actors who don't want to do that kind of stuff. No, he was he was fine with it. Uh, the, there was only one problem with uh, during the makeup process, and that was taking the uh, uh, Arby Morris's uh, uh, head cast. Head, head cast. Okay. And and uh, he freaked out the first well, yeah, time. Yeah, that happens. Uh, I, I would freak out. It's very claustrophobic if you never had. Uh, I haven't done it, and I don't. I don't think. I've had it done. It's not pleasant. Oh, but it isn't. It's, no, no, that guy looks pretty shriveled. Yeah, because no, the collar's big enough. <laughs> Those are good shrivels. Um, you don't do a cameo in this, do you? Or you're not in No, the, no, okay. no, no. So again, we haven't met, but Nick Maley's the guy who did all the uh, yeah, all Nick, those wonderful makeup Nick, effects. Nick Maley, uh, and uh, he, he was what else Absolutely. had he done? Because he's not like you know. Uh, I'm not. Doesn't sure. come straight to the I, mind like Dick Smith no, or I know. Rick and Baker. I I had, I had talked to Stuart Freeborn, Freeborn, right. right. who uh, done uh, Chewbacca, uh, and, uh, yeah, the, the Apes in 2001. Yeah, and and um, and I, I I just this this was I, I I don't remember how I met Nick, but was he a British technician? Yeah. Okay. And but. Uh, he, even he more made the impressive. claims of doing, you know, being able to, uh, you know, make, 
Well, I, I saw a, a skeleton right. move by by uh, little eye hooks and yeah. uh, and string. And 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 you know, and he said, I can do those things. Can, well, it's impressive because it's not like a, a guy who had been you know oh. doing that many you know before and, and it, it, you know that he could do that kind of stuff. It was fantastic. Now this. It, it, this scene is again your gothic science fiction hybrid scene with you know the Mario Bava lighting in there. Yeah, the energy that waves in the light and that beam of light. And unfortunately, she's finally put some clothes on. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, yeah. it's still kind of sexy. You know? uh, they, she's got her Princess Leia outfit on. They 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 they, they come off again. <laughs> I just thought you know I don't know if. It, come with me, Carl. Well, she looks. You know what she reminds me of here, almost like Saint Joan of Arc. You know, it's like almost like a martyr. You know, like yeah. the, when they're, they're, they're the yeah. saints is they're about to be burnt at the stake. <laughs> yeah. But so. This is. Yeah, this is great. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, he even had a couple of London double decker buses and. Oh yeah. Got to blow them up and. Oh yeah. So. Do you believe Rails, I mean, in your mind, or, you know, is Rails Beck willingly going to her is she, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, at this yeah. point? Yeah, and he doesn't quite know what he's going to do. Uh, you know, whatever it is, I mean, it's pretty bad out, out, out there. And, uh, uh, you know, he'd like to, to you know, like, like to calm things down a little bit. Right. And uh, if, if that means killing her or or what that means right. or letting her kill him it, it just yeah and it, which oh <laughs> love i love that oh that's so cool he's got this uh, okay now very now those are real people but they're behind the real, real people fire. burning to death right no, I'm just uh, yeah. oh, there we go now that's yeah. a great good gore dawn that's of the a... dead moment for our, our, the gore hounds out there reading fangoria and I remember this was a time when horror fans would just rate movies not on how you know how gory it was. That's how they determined how yeah, gory yeah, it was. Yeah. You know, God bless. <laughs> uh, but um, the writing is so tight. How you have had the parallels, you know, going back and forth between Firth and Finley and Railsbeck and Matilda May, and now you bring them together for the grand yeah. finale. I like that. It's 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 it, it's very tidy. Look at that tube station, the oh, exterior. That, this is real. I mean, this, okay. is, this, this was, uh, they shot a tube station down on a Sunday, and I shot this uh, piece of film. But 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 this, I I got to build the, the thing, you know. Oh they they built it for oh, me. Oh, wow. Uh, this is uh, epic. Like for just a couple of seconds, you know. This is epic. Now, you, you was... You, were you on schedule with this? Did you, you know, in this, yeah. the 120 days? So there was never them saying, hey, come on, let's stop, you know? No, no. Good. No, no, no. It, 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 rather than to stop, they would say, okay, let's shoot an extra hour. Okay. Uh, but, but, but this this wasn't the kind of film that you, you would shoot uh, 18 or 20 hour days. It just, uh, uh, the, the, the British crews, just didn't do do life that way on uh, no, on, on, a, on a big picture and uh, okay and here we have no this is not Mick Jagger's brother. no no this that's the other uh, one. Bill Bailey or yeah uh, yeah no no he's the one I really wanted uh, Billy Idol yeah, for yeah, Billy Idol for it because yeah. I remember at the time reading in Fangor Billy Idol was doing it it was so yeah. cool so what happened was he on Oh yeah, he couldn't do it. What, what, what happened was, I got on the plane. Before I got on the plane to fly to London to shoot this movie, I uh, I did the Billy Idol video. Like dancing with it, myself. It took uh, two two shooting days, and I think two nights to edit it. Maybe maybe one night. Uh, there we go. And. A classic and, MTV music video. Yeah, yeah, dancing with myself. Yeah, it's, it's the only video I ever shot, and um, and um, well, it was so in vogue after Landis did the Thriller video to get horror directors to do music videos. Yeah, 
And and so had you a, uh, approached him on the set about doing, you know, Life Force or? Yeah, uh, either on the set or once I got over there, I called him or something like that. And and then and, and then Billy and I saw one another quite a few times. After that, it, I really like Billy. And, He's uh, cool. Would uh, you know lo- love to work with him? Yeah, he. I always felt he, he could he would be a great actor. Yeah, yeah, he is a good actor. Good presence, but it just didn't work out with his touring schedule. Yeah, yeah, he's probably doing a yeah. on the road. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. No, he, Billy, Billy was um, working all the time then. So now suddenly all their clothes are gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those clothes are... You're one of us. You always have been. You're like me. Be with me. Now what... You know, you've always been one of us. Is that... Uh, well, that's either um, the truth or a lie. Interesting, yeah. But it... Just a little more. Just a little more. The last frame of the movie, it's... Okay, well, it's... It's... It's probably... It's, Fall somewhere in between. In, in, in between, yeah. I mean, you know, are we all one of them? You know. Well, exactly. Are we all the same thing? Yeah. I mean, you know, earlier on or, they had talked about how these were the precursors to the actual vampires. You know. Yeah, and yeah. They've come, and you know, who knows? You know, uh, there are many people in a lot of religions that view lust and you know, uh, amour as something evil and destructive. You know, um, uh, it's uh, and it's a strange place out there, matey. <laughs> but what's interesting is, in this moment, this is great. This is, you know, the double impalement. Yeah. Ultimately, one could say that his, you know, his love of humanity or his, you know, practice it over t- yeah. it, it wins the day. Yeah. It it's it's uh, it's. It, it 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 could mean a lot of things. I mean, they they do they they do have a destination at this point. Yes. But uh, and uh, when his awareness of what is real comes about is uh, may not be until yeah. Where are they going? And 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 again, you know, you can't. Yeah. That, of course. That, 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 there's something in here. the. Those, those little crystals. Yeah, what are they? Are those, well, are those other space vampires? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the little crystals that they grow in, and they just uh, they just gave them uh, a new the energy to. Right. Uh, and again, who knows? Maybe he was one of them, and he they found him uh, again. Uh, maybe uh, this was all about her fi- reuniting with him. Well, that's that's what she. Uh, that's what she said. That's what she says. And there's the artichoke. And there it is. Well, look yeah. at it. It does look like an artich, or maybe an asparagus. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's the first I've heard that story. But <laughs> like I say, John may. Well, this is very Star uh, Wars nod too. You know that uh, oh. going on. Oh yeah. And now, again, let's just you know, I've read the Freudian interpretation. This is very phallic, and the sword and the penetration. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's all I, there. I, you know, if you don't, want don't that. Say you could miss it. Now, I, th- th- this is. Uh, I like giving credit, you know, to people that uh, participated, uh, worked, were on payroll, and did a very damn hard job, all of them making the movie, and uh, and they all get credit. Well, they should. So you'll see one of the longest. Uh, I think I think we have about six minutes of this. Well, and six good minutes because this again here is Henry Mancini's mag- majestic score. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and, and I'm sure, yeah, I don't think this was available at the time on on, on a record or CD. Yeah, no, it wasn't. No, I, I remember uh, coming back from England and and having my own little uh, uh, tape cassette. Yeah, you know that I put in my car, uh, you, you know, and I'd listen to it in the car, and I'd listen to it at home, and and and, and you know, and it's funny because I think maybe is had this it... score available. It is uh, now. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. It's it's it, you know it was put out by one of those companies that I think Silver Screen. I'm not sure where you know uh, the, the soundtrack of the month. And I mean you know it was a big deal. Now, so this movie came out. There was two cuts. One that was you know the American cut. Yeah. Uh, did you get to cut that or was it cut? Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 I mean I was sitting there. Uh, 
Well, that's or, or positive. You, oh, yeah, yeah. No, it was nothing, uh, you know, no, nothing that went on behind my back. I mean, they just said, you know, we're, uh, hey, we're going to have a shorter version of this. For America. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, I guess, the, us, us Americans are less patient than the British. I don't, I just don't know. I, 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 I don't, I, maybe, I don't know. So I kind of doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> now, interesting, it may not have struck the huge chord that Cannon was hoping for, which perhaps was about timing and not setting the right expectation to an audience. But the fact of the matter is, this film has survived and I think is poised to really be rediscovered as, as, as a real it, 80s masterpiece yeah. and, and one of your top films. Yeah, yeah, well I, you know, I, 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 this film in the 80s had been released as Space Vampires mm -hmm. and had a, um, a, a different one sheet. Yeah. Uh, the perception would have been uh, totally different. I exactly, but. Because that's, you know, that's really what it is. It is Space Vampires and it's Life Force, but most importantly, it's 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 looking better than ever. Thank you so much. Uh, it's going down memory lane with Life Force. I just I'm just so thrilled it's out there and it looks this good and sounds this good and uh, you know hopefully we'll see uh, invaders from Mars next. From I, I, <laughs> so, <laughs> last but not least, real if, if if somebody just what's the when somebody when what's the first thing that comes to your mind when somebody says Life Force? Matilda Ray. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't think you're alone. I don't think you're alone. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Toby. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Scream Factory. <laughs> Thank you.